Good afternoon, biology classes. Today's lesson, which will be on Thursday for you, will be creating a pedigree. Uh, during this week, you've been practicing um, making connections between uh, Punnett squares and pedigrees, including today's assignment, Tuesday, when you looked at the nicotine smoking family and how that passed down genetically. So you have an introduction to what a pedigree will look like. Your mission in this um, final assignment on Thursday will be to create your own pedigree of your family and another family for one trait that shows incomplete dominance for either hair texture, eye size, nose size, mouth size. I gave you a picture reminder link um, that you can take a look at so you know where to get your genotypes from. Here it is. And once you have that, you're going to um, draw the squares and circles that you saw during the smoking activity. Um, so when we begin our pedigree, we're actually going to use Mr. Novick's family using the same pictures that you did on Monday's assignment. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit on those now because little did you know that I actually am ordained to officiate weddings. So I figured why not take liberties and marry off one of Novick's child um, into the future. Okay, so we're going to be a little bit futuristic here. So using that, we're going to start setting up Mr. Novick's pedigree um, where his child will get married and then they'll have children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And as you can see here, you're going to also create Punnett squares. Um, you're going to use an online coin flipping prop and also a four sided die in order to randomly choose what traits you're getting. And so I'll go through that um, when the time comes. As we get into the second part of the same assignment, you're going to be adding in, again, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So I'm going to now flip screens and start putting together the pedigree for you. So I'm going to go into full mode here. And what we're going to do, I have Mr. Novick's picture up here, so I'm going to represent him by a square shape, as males are represented by squares, and his wife, Catherine, will be a circle for females. Now, I chose the trait mouth size as my trait, and so I'm going to be using the letter M to represent the gene as it passes through um, his family and into, um, into his children's family and grandchildren's family, et cetera. Okay. So taking a look at mouth size, I determined Mr. Novick is heterozygous, where he has a dominant letter and a recessive letter, but again, an incomplete dominance, that equals an intermediate or average characteristic. Um, and notice the shading, it's only shaded on the recessive letters side. Okay. Catherine, doing my best judgment, would be in the small mouth size. Now, I know some of you might think Novik has a big mouth during class, but keep in mind, these are what you see physically, phenotypes, not characteristics or behavioral traits. So, because Catherine has what I consider to be a smaller size mouth, I'm going to assign her the letters, little m, little m, okay? And they have three children, and they're all boys. So I'm going to add them to the picture here. And add my props. We have their youngest son, Leo, and Frank. And somewhere, the other picture must be stuck to me. There it is. And Gabriel. Okay. And when I looked at their traits, again, I considered Gabe and Frank both to be intermediate or average size mouths. And so I'm going to again shade the small side. I'm going to put this allele underneath, big M, little m. 
And I also decided that Frank would be in the medium size mouth. And so he also will be big M, little m. And then I decided proportionally that Leo, the youngest, will have a smaller size mouth similar to mom. And so we'll be fully shaded. So again, big M, little m means medium. And at some point you might get big M, big M, and that'll be the dominant trait. Now, here is where we know that one child will have to get married because that's what the instructions say. So I'm going to use an outside child here, which would be the oldest. Typically it goes oldest to youngest, left to right. And so some young lady in the future will be paired up with Gabriel. And as the assignment says, they'll have two children and then three grandchildren and then four great grandchildren. That's how the family tree will go. Um, so what we got to do here is we know this child also had to have a mom and a dad. So in knowing that, I'm going to plug them in. And here is where the odds of the dice and the um, coin flip come in. So I'm going to exit this full screen now and go back to sharing my screen. And I'm going to go here where it says, click the online coin flip, to determine if they have sons or daughters. Um, so I'll come back to that. But first, we got to figure out what the parent of Gabriel's spouse had as a genotype. So here's the template we're going to use. So box one, two, three, four. Um, you'll roll the dice. Whatever box you get would be the child you get. And box one corresponds with this box, big M, big M. Box two with big M, little m box three with big M, little m, and box four with little m, little m. So we're first going to flip um, the coin. Actually, we're not gonna flip the coin just yet. We're gonna figure out, yeah, we'll flip the coin to determine if they have uh, boys or girls, and we'll also roll the dice to figure out which of these genotypes they have. So I'm gonna go up to the old flip a coin. Nope, I'm gonna start with the dice roll. So I'm going to flip screens here, and I'm going to click roll, and I get box three. So we're going to say dad up here is going to be box three. And we're going to say mom will also be box three. So I'll go back to my pedigree template, and box three would mean both parents end up heterozygous. So I'll label those. And again, heterozygous, when we're talking um, incomplete dominance, means average form. And so because we're doing mouse size, we're going to follow that one trait only throughout the generation. Now, with that, we can draw Punnett squares. Here's Mr. Novick's Punnett square um, and his wife. And we can see... We have big M, little m, big M, little m, which would be average. And we have little m, little m in these two boxes, which would be a smaller mouth. And that explains, again, Mr. Novick's children up top. So now what we're going to do is figure out which trait the child had that Mr. Novick's first son, Gabriel, um, hypothetically marries into the future. And so I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to roll the dice one more time. And box four or will be, as you see here, box four is going to be little m, little m. So the person that gave Mary's is going to be, still ahead fill these in, half shaded, the little m gets shaded. And this will be fully shaded because it has a smaller, the recessive form. So I'm going to zoom in on the full screen now again. Um, I don't know if it makes a difference to you, but it'll make it easier for me to see. And just in case. So now we have the first generation, which is you 
And then your second generation would be your children, um, which would then eventually get married and have third generation kids, which would be their kids, but your grandchildren. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is to have grandkids in the instruction that says um, in the second generation, they're going to have two children. Okay. So right now what I'm going to do is put out the two little child lines and then we're going to flip the coin to see if they had boys or girls. Okay. So I'm going to go back to sharing. Um, the screen. And we're going to flip coins. And the instructions say heads equal male and tails equal female. So I'm going to say flip again. And so their child is going to be tails. So their first child will be a girl. And the second child will also be a girl. Okay, so females again are represented by circles, so we're going to leave it at that. Now, this gets a little bit different here. We also got to go back and draw in the Punnett square for the family that Mr. Novak's son married. Um, and then we're going to draw a Punnett square for the odds of Mr. Novak's son's wife and and his possibility to give a certain trait to their kids in the future. Okay, so let me go back to full mode here. And I'll show you that. So again, we have two girls. So I don't want to go full mode yet because we got to figure out what their traits are. So I'm going to go down to the bottom section where I drew the Punnett square. And we're going to now draw We're going to draw the Punnett square for possibilities for Mr. Novak's grandchildren. And so if you look at the genotypes, the Punnett square is going to be little m, little m crossed with Mr. Novak's son, which is big m, little m. And we'll see that allows a chance for a medium mouth in the granddaughters or a smaller mouth in the granddaughters or another medium mouth for box two or a smaller box for box four. Now, so it's a little bit hard in limited space, but make sure you're really emphasizing big letters and little letters when you're drawing out your, your traits. The finish filling in the Punnett square. We have the possible outcomes for Mr. Novak's grandkids. So now we have in a different set of possibilities. We have box one, two, three, four, and so we're not going to use the original template that I showed. You're going to use this new template of the actual possibilities for the grandkids. So with that said, I'll go back to my four-sided dice and so make a note to self. That's going to get box one and box four. All right, so if we look at the possible outcomes, we have box one and box four. So one, two, three, four, if you remember the template, the first daughter has big M, little m. And so that will mean half shaded, medium sized mouth. And there is a spot for you to go back and describe your genotypes and phenotypes uh, later, I don't have space on here, but it is written into the instruction. And then box four for generation two possible outcomes would be little m, little m. 
And so the second daughter is going to be fully shaded and have the recessive trait, which is a smaller mouth. So now we have one last generation. So some random family um, will now marry into the granddaughter. And so we know that has to be a son. And so this boy has to have a mom and a dad. So I'm going to add those in. We got to figure out what their traits are going back to that original template. So if I scoot this screen over. So now we have the last generation where we're going to try to have great game, great grandkids. So come down here. And I go back to this screen. And I again say, here's my generic template. I'm going to flip the coin to see which box the parents are, and then figure out the kids in their Punnett square as well. So if we roll the dice. We have dad in this family is going to be box two, and mom will be box four. And so now I go back to, again, that setup. And again, I can see box two is big M, little m, and box four is little m, little m. So I'll put the parents genotype. Let me go back to this. So I just filled in the genotypes of the grandkids' spouse. And in doing so, I will again have a big M, little m, Punnett square um, for each of them, which is again, rather than redraw, it's going to look just like the Punnett square we just did, um, so I can again go ahead and flip the coins to determine if they have boys or girls, and then assign them a genotype based on this pattern. All right, so we're almost finished here, and then you'll be able to try your own setup in just a bit. So let me go back to sharing my screen. And so now again, we're on this last step where we're doing great grandchildren using dice roll. So box four. So box four, again, just to draw this out. Little m, little m with big M, little m. And little m, little m and number four. All right, so if I roll my dice, we got a number four, so that is little m, little m. And so the first kid will be little m, little m, and we gotta figure out if they're boys or girls. So I'm going to actually backtrack and go flip my coins. And as I watch it flip, there's a great granddaughter. If I flip again, there's a great grandson. I flip again. We have another great grandson. And if I flip again, we have a Tails, which is a great granddaughter. And so the last step will be going back to fill in the details using the dice roll. Okay. And so 
in doing that, again, we're using the bottom box. I get a one, so that's big M, little m. And I flip again for the second child is box four. So that's little m, little m. Box two, one, two is big M, little m. And the last flip is a one. And that is, again is big M, little m. So I'll finish shading in the, the small letters. Again, the recessive letters are shaded. That means they carry the recessive if only part of it's shaded and they show the small mouth if fully shaded. So in this case, we see the second child, the second Great grandson is small mouth, and all the other grand great grandchildren are medium or average mouth. Now I see I did forget to fill in the spouse of, of uh, generation three, and so in doing that, I'll flip one last time because it's the same Punnett score we've been using. In box three, one, two, three, says this grandchild will be little m, little m. And now, if we go back to full screen just to finish out, we can see. Uh, anything that's little m, little m in my case will be fully shaded. If it's big m, little m, it's only shaded where the little m side is. And we can see going through the generations, everything's accounted for. We go down to the bottom where you'll make um, the second Punnett square here. And then you have one Punnett square in each of the second, third generation. So, I would definitely, when you watch this video playback, um, watch a little bit, pause it, do the steps I just did, watch a little bit more, pause it, do the steps I just did, and then you should be all good to go. And like usual, please reach out to Mr. Novak or I, and we will do our best to guide you, um, whether through a Google Meet or a Zoom, um, or just through email, whatever format works for you will work for us. Thanks for watching and hopefully you'll have, have some good success.